Hey folks, this is Nod, and we are mucking around in X-Plane. Today I want to talk about gliding. And specifically, um, there seems to be a rumor going around that uh, gliding in X-Plane is broken and um, you shouldn't even bother. And I think that's very unfortunate because while there is some small truth to that, um, overall it is not broken. You can absolutely go gliding in X-Plane. It's a fantastic experience. Uh, you can find lift all over the place and you can fly for hundreds of miles and stay up for hours and hours if you want to. However, um, there's a couple of things you kind of got to do to make that work and they're very simple and you, can, you don't need any special tools or anything to do that. You can do it with the stock game and I kind of want to show you um, what that's all about. So hopefully this video will explain that, get you started. Okay, let's take two seconds here and talk about the two types of lift available to you in X-Plane. The first one is thermals and that is just a rising columns of warm air um, that you can then turn really sharply in and if you stay in in the vicinity of that uh, thermal it's usually a very narrow shaft so you have to turn quite sharply and you stay in that and you will go up and you gain altitude and then you once you get high enough you can then proceed on your course and uh, you know um, that's brilliant you can go cross country it is however one of the things that um, is slightly suboptimal in x -plane. Um I would not go as far as to say though it's broken it's not broken it absolutely does work you can thermal in the in the, in the explain and it's 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 kind of fun um yeah so i i wouldn't don't not glide because you think that because some people say it's not quite like the real thermals i mean that's you know you just you're missing out on a lot of fun if you do that okay uh the next type of uh lift is ridge lift this is actually quite good in explain um this is actually one of the things i really enjoy doing um basically ridge lift let's find a decent uh, diagram here uh all right this one here like for example Okay, so you've got wind blowing along in a certain direction, and it hits a mountain. And that wind then has nowhere to go but up. So if you fly along that ridge line, or that mountain line, uh, and you've got the wind coming from the right direction, you're on the windward side of the, uh, of the topography, you will encounter rising air, and you can do what's called ridge soaring, or ridge, you can encounter ridge lift, which is absolutely brilliant. And uh, that works really well in x -Plane. They did a brilliant job of that. And actually, if you go on the opposite side of the hill you'll encounter the wind going down the side of the other side of the mountain you'll hit sink which is very very bad so it's kind of fun you have to like plan your routes and you have to sort of go through the uh, the mountains in just a certain specific way depending on the wind direction and always stay on the windward sides and stay away from the leeward sides it's cool it's fun anyway let's uh enough babbling about why this works let's actually have a go with it all right, well, before we get any further here, we need to figure out where we're going to glide. Um, you can't really glide anywhere, uh, you please, if you want to do ridge lift. Although, if you're doing thermal, uh, you can pretty much glide anywhere, except for maybe over water. So, for example, like the middle of the U.S., for example, that's just flat as it can be, or Florida or whatnot, you know, there's just absolutely flatness there. Um, you can do thermal stuff there. However, if you want to do... Um, Ridge lift, some of the best ridges actually in the United States, for example, are in the Adirondack Mountains. As you can see, there's like these long, thin, sort of stringy ridges that go on for hundreds, if not thousands of miles. However, they're not very tall. They're, uh, they're kind of low and you've kind of got to know what you're doing and um, they're a bit of a challenge. So if you're going to start off with gliding, I wouldn't recommend going there. We're going to head over to the Rocky Mountains where it's clearly quite rocky. Now there's some really marvelous spots like I got a favorite spot here in Utah I like to hang out with, um, with the Wasatch Mountains and um, I don't know, pretty much anywhere there's a bump you run the wind up against that and you're going to be able to get ridge lift. Uh, for this tutorial here I'm going to uh, we're going to drop down into this little um, area here. All right, the airport is uh, it's Muck Ranch, 47 Oscar Romeo, uh, I believe in Oregon. And basically, what you can see here is there's this huge sort of like, you know, there's a flat area up here, and then right along the edge here is this huge ridge, basically, that goes up pretty high, and you could uh, you probably follow that um, for quite a ways if you wanted to, or hop over to here or something, but um, we're going to fly here. So, now, ordinarily in the United States, the wind blows from the uh, west to the east, so we're going to kind of fudge this a little bit here, and um, we're going to set up a wind coming from the east blowing to the west. Right, right on along this uh, ridge line here. So let's get that set up next. All right, now here's the tr tricky part: is uh, weather. We're going to need to create some custom weather here. Um, you can use the uh, 
the match the real world conditions. However, in my experience, it uh, at least at the time I'm recording this, it doesn't really work right. Well, for one, you're not guaranteed to get the right conditions. You're not guaranteed to get your wind blowing in the direction you want. So it is, for that reason, it's a good idea to build your own window. The other issues is thermals and things like that don't always uh, propagate in that weather. So I, I don't know, it's a little quirky. For sailplane flying, until they improve things or come out with new add-ons or mods or whatever, I'm going to go with manually configured. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create two wind layers. All right, I'll put them way up the top there. Okay, we're going to put the first wind layer right at zero. I'm going to put our second wind layer at about 10,000 feet. All right, so the first wind layer, we're going to set to, I don't know, about 12 knots. So it's not crazy windy on the ground here. And going back to our uh, our map here, we want the wind blowing kind of that away. So I'm going to make this arrow here point that way. So that'll be kind of pointing right at our ridge line, which is good. So we've got a 12 knot wind blowing that way. So we're going to make our other wind layer, it's a little higher. We're going to make this a little stronger because it's obviously higher up. We're going to make this like, yeah, I don't know, 20 knots. I'm going to put a slightly different... Uh, Direction, let's try like 90 degrees or so, or close enough. It's a bit tricky, this thing. Anyway, um, I guess you could type in 90, that works. Okay, um, oh, where did it do? Driving me nuts, this thing. Okay, there we go. So, all right, so we got our wind. We've got a 113 degrees at 12 knots. Uh, this is zero altitude, and then at 10,000 feet, we got a 20 knot wind blowing at 90 degrees. Very good. All right, just for pretties, we're going to stick in two cloud layers. We're going to take our cumulus layer here. We're going to stick that pretty much at, uh, I don't know, about 11,000 feet. We don't want to fly any higher than that, otherwise we'll get hypoxia and die, because I don't think this glider has oxygen in it. So that's kind of a warning. If we're flying above the clouds, we're in trouble. And plus, I don't think you can. This ridge is not that high anyway. And the cirrus clouds, we'll just leave them up there at uh, 21,000 feet, just to make the sky look pretty. Okay, visibility. Uh, we're going to crank that up to like 30, just so it's nice and crisp and clear. We've got a nice day. We don't want any rain, we don't want any storminess. Actually, going back to that, I'm quickly, let me just do this. Um, in the wind layer, uh, you don't want any turbulence, gusts, or wind shear. It's just going to make your life miserable. Um, that's not what we're doing today. And gliding, we're just going to be gliding in a nice, perfect gliding day. So make sure you got all those zeroed out, except for the wind speed, of course. Okay, going back over here, uh, we don't want any storminess. I uh, don't care about that. Okay, thermals. Um, in this demo, I'm probably going to be concentrating mostly on ridge lift, uh, but we want to have some thermals available. So you can, if you're really just starting out and you want thermals all the time, you can crack it up to 25%. I find that a little overkill. You're getting thermals like all the time and it's, it's almost annoying to some point. It's too easy. So I'm going to go with like, I don't know, 12% thermals and I'm just going to make life easier myself. I'm going to crank the climb rate that you get when you're in a thermal all the way up to 1500 feet per minute. And that about covers it really. We don't want any runways wet or anything crazy like that. So there's our weather. So I'm going to hit done. All right, so everything's set up. Got our plane, got our location, got our weather. Oh, and the other thing is you pretty much want to set the set it around noon. That's when the noontime boomers are. The big thermals come out and stuff. And plus you can see it's nice and easy. All right, so let's start off light now. OK, here's our glider hanging out on this little dirt strip here. And as you can see, there's our ridge line right there, which is super close to the airport, which is why I chose this location, because uh, the ridge line doesn't take you very high, you'll notice, and uh, you pretty much got to get over to your source of lift as soon as possible once you get off the winch. So, uh, I mean, there's other ways of getting, uh, you know, you can hook into a thermal, or you can uh, obviously use the uh, tow plane to get up higher. But uh, speaking of the winch line, here it is. You can kind of vaguely make out this sort of uh, steel cable going all the way down the runway. That's what's going to drag us into the air, so... Hop in the cockpit here. All right, a couple of things. This lever here, this blue lever, that's your spoilers. Uh, they're out right now. As soon as I, you notice it says release brakes for winch. Um, as soon as I release the brakes, it's going to actually move that lever forwards, and that's um, my spoiler. The blades will go back inside, and um, you know it will be in full gliding mode. The other thing to consider here is your trim. Um, you can adjust that here. You can see where your trim is. Uh, right now, I've got it in the middle, which is where I want it. All right, so we're going to turn on our uh, avionics here. Uh, little avionics we have. And we're going to turn on the Vario, although ordinarily I don't do that until we're actually up in the air. But um, 
Just want to let you listen to it as we're going here. All right, so as soon as I release these brakes, it's going to start moving. So you want to first thing you want to do is level the wings because you can see right now my uh, my left wing is sitting on the ground right now. So you want to level your wings out. I've also got a pretty wicked uh, crosswind here, so because uh, we've got the wind coming from the you know from over here and it's going across to here to the edge. So I'm going to expect a crosswind. So I might do a little bit of rudder count on that. All right, anyway, let's get flying. So releasing the brakes. Three, two, one. Here we go. And you'll get off the ground almost immediately. So the idea is you want to pull the nose up just a little bit above the horizon, but not too aggressively, otherwise you may break the cable. As you can see, we're going up nicely. Now look at your airspeed, make sure you're not getting too slow. Although, it's kind of hard to screw up on the winch line, that's why I'm kind of recommending you do it, because it's pretty easy. And the variometer is pinging away, we've got obviously mountains of lift, but in a second the nose will start to drop as we run out of winch line, which is happening now. And I'm going to release right there, just as it pulls the nose below the horizon. Okay, so I'm immediately going to turn towards the, uh, the hill over here. We want to keep an eye on our airspeed here. Airspeed's controlled with, uh, you know, the nose position. Drop the nose, you go faster. Pull the nose up, you go slower. To a degree. Anyway, we're going to fly straight towards the mountain here. And, uh, you know, the wind will be going up here, so hopefully... Wind's at our back right now, so hopefully we'll get a, a bump in a second. Wait for it, wait for it. Okay, here it is. We're in positive lift now, not much yet, but uh, we're getting there. So I'm going to turn before I actually crash into the mountain. Start flying along the edge of it here. And hopefully we'll get lift in a second here. There it is. A little bit, not much yet. Yeah, okay, now we're getting some lift. There we go. That's what I wanted. So I'm just going to kind of keep myself close to the terrain, but clearly I don't want to crash into it, so... And I want to follow this ridge line along and kind of, you know, deal with the undulations along the terrain here and uh, kind of keep it close. And you want to be able to look it around a bit and see what's going on. And uh, I've got head tracking, which makes that easy, but uh, you always want to be very aware of your surroundings when you're obviously this close to the terrain and you want to be absolutely want to keep an idea I an idea of where the wind is you know it's coming from over there and it's going this is pretty easy right now because it's, it's coming almost perpendicular to this rock face but as you travel further you know you're going to get different angles and things like that going on so you've got to be very careful you don't want to fly on the leeward side of a, a mountain because that's where all the air is going down the other side of the mountain and sinking so you always want to be on the uh, the windward side of a, a rock face when you're rich soaring, so... Okay, I'm going along pretty good here. We're climbing nicely. Yeah, we're doing about three meters per second, which is pretty good. Maybe we can get a little better. I remember I, I set the uh, little bit stronger wind the higher we go, so actually the further we get up this rock face, the better the lift should get. Halfway up the, uh, the ridge right now, tracking right along it. Now we could go pretty far down here before we have to turn around. All right. All right, this is an interesting part. Whether I do, I try to go over this. There's not much of a slope here, so I'm a little wary about turning into that right now because it may not be much lift on that. So I'm gonna go. Well, we got enough height; we can risk it, but. Uh, you always got to manage your energy too, you know, I'm going a little bit faster than the minimum sink uh, thing there, but if you get really, if you really get into trouble and you're going to hit the ground, you want a little bit of airspeed so you can pull back and, uh, you know, on the stick and hop over some bumps if you need to. So you never want to get too slow when you're doing this. Okay, I want to get closer to the train now, because that was a flat part we just, uh, see how the lift has dropped off because we went over that flat part? should pick up a lot now when we get into this uh, more, you know, it's almost 45 degree slope there, so that's going to be really good lift. Yeah, look at that. Really hug the contours here. Get 
the maximum out of us, and we're almost at the top now. Keep on moving. I wouldn't say this is the prettiest scenery ever. That is probably the least inviting water I've ever seen down there, but uh, <laughs> it's called Crump Lake, apparently. Yeah. Okay, we're at the top now, so as you can see it's just flat over this area. A lot of hills, you know, you'll, you'll have a, a drop-off down on the other side of the hill, but this area here is just kind of sort of plateau. Alright, now, as I come over the lip here, I'll lose my lift because it'll, it'll stop going up. In fact, actually, you'll get it right at the ridge here. In just the right spot, you'll have like the maximum amount of lift you can get. It's just spilling over the top of this and but you start getting a little too far into the, you know, past the lip, and you'll, you'll lose your lift like I've got now. I haven't got anything. So, you don't want to spend too much time back here. That's where all the sink is, and, uh, yeah, it's not good back here. So, I'm now going to turn out towards over the lip again, and we should pick up our lift again. Once we get out over the edge. Might be a little high, we'll see. Yeah, you obviously can't continue riding this ridge lip up much higher than the actual ridge you're on. It's uh, it's obviously tied to the actual terrain, so you can get a little bit above it, but not a whole lot. That's where thermals come in handy uh, if we're getting, you know, you can go all the way up to the clouds if you want to. Alright, so uh, we kind of run this ridge here. It looks like it goes a little bit further down here. Not a whole lot. But this is the point where, like, for example, we could try gliding over there, for example, way over there, if we wanted to pick up this ridge line here. You know, if we go around the other side of that, we might be able to, like, run that ridge. Or if we go down south here, we got options down there. But you are obviously limited as you're gliding about where you can go based on the terrain, which is the challenge. It's actually what makes it interesting. So, I'm actually going to do a Yui here, so there's nothing tells, telling me that I have to run the ridge line this way. I can turn around and I always, always turn away from the hill. Never turn into the hill. Because if you're, uh, you know, you, regardless of how big you make, how smooth you make this turn, it's not going to matter because you've got plenty of space out here. But if I'm down in this direction, for example, I'm going to do it now and show you why you don't. So I'm going to turn into the hill here, and you'll kind of see immediately what happens. It's like, not good. You know, you run the risk of just running right into the terrain, which is very dangerous. You know, I can crank it over here, but it's, uh, it's not good practice to do that. Very dangerous. So, yeah, always turn away from the, the hill if you can. There are a few exceptions, like if you're going through passes and things like that, but, uh, All right, so that pretty much uh, sums up ridge running. Um, yeah, I, the, I mean the, th the challenge now is to find, you know, see how far I can go with this and uh, follow the terrain. Clearly, having a moving map is hugely uh, useful. You can, uh, you know, you can kind of see where you can see because of this, this dark shading on here, or where you can go, where you can't. I mean, where the lift's going to be based on the wind direction. See this little. Uh, Dude out here actually showing me the wind direction, which is very useful. I can see which angle it's coming against the rocks. This is a little, little nav map, if I didn't mention that. Alright, well, uh, yeah. So that's that's ridge running. So you can also kind of play with this. So uh, if I head out over the valley here. And drop the nose a little bit. Get some airspeed going here. Right, heck not. Not the best loop in the world, but it'll do. So these are actually pretty aerobatic, these things. They're kind of fun to throw around the gliders are. They're not all just putt-putt along. You can actually get them going pretty fast if you want to. Alright, well, there's ridge lift. 
Uh, I don't want to make this video too long, so um, I think I'll make another video about thermaling. But uh, right now I could head out into the valley there and see if I can find a thermal. And, you know, get some real altitude, and then maybe I could hop over to one of these other ridges around here and play with that for a while. But the combination between ridges and thermals, you can pretty much go anywhere you want in x -Plane. It's kind of cool. Oh yes, look at that lift. Lovely lift. Very good. Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this stuff, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Subscribe, please subscribe so you can see more of these videos. That'll make me happy. And uh, take care. Thanks for watching.